It was the most iconic firearm of German forces during World War II. It was a descendant of the MP-18 or Bergmann of World War I. And the gun was the German MP-40. When we talk about submachine guns of World War II, uh, the first thing that just about anybody's going to conjure up as a mental image is that of a German soldier holding an MP-40. I mean, where would Hollywood be today if there weren't MP-40s and Von Ryan's Express and just about every other film, actually every film made of on World War II that involved German, German soldiers. There he is with the ubiquitous Schmeiser, you know, the burp gun. Germans uh, fielded a uh, submachine gun in the First World War called the MP-18, sometimes called the Bergman after the company that made it. Uh, they were used in the uh, last year of the war, you know, to some telling effect. After World War I, the German army was barred from doing any kind of uh, work in small arms. So the, the German army, you know, in the 1930s was equipped with a wide variety of, of, of submachine guns, none of which were really appropriate to modern warfare. On the eve of the Second World War, Germany's armored troops and paratroopers were clamoring for a new submachine gun. The, the German army turned to Irma, who had been doing a lot of work on submachine guns in secret. The, the product of all that work was the MP38. The MP38 had many features that were desired by German forces, most notably its light weight. However, this German firearm was not without its drawbacks. This was a nine millimeter submachine gun uh, with a folding stock that would be utilizing the stamped and welded parts, which is a radical departure from previous machine guns, which were all very heavy and had been machined out of block steel. It was very time consuming to produce. It took a lot of tooling time because of the milled receiver. Okay, and also it wasn't very safe because of the, the open bolt blowback action. The MP40 was developed to address a lot of the, the trouble with the, with the MP38. The MP40 was a lot cheaper to manufacture and required a lot less tooling time. Uh, a lot of cheap metal stampings, you know, that could be farmed out to subcontractors so they could make a lot of them very quickly. Between 1938 and 1944, over 750,000 MP40 submachine guns were produced. Chambered in 9mm Luger, it was a highly desired weapon for German soldiers fighting Allied forces. The MP40 was a very popular weapon with the German soldiers um, and very widely distributed. Um, almost uh, every German unit okay, was, uh, was issued them, you know, everywhere from you know, northern Russia to to uh, North Africa. Um, they were generally issued about two per squad, and it was uh, probably one of the best submachine guns of the war. It uh, was certainly one of the most widely copied. Okay, the British Sten, uh, the Russian PPSH-43, and our own grease gun, or a great deal to the MP-40 in terms of design and operation. There were a lot of really good ergonomic touches on the MP-40. It has both a front and a rear pistol grip. The, the bolt operation is uh, very smooth. Um, it, uh, it relies on the continuous recoil principle. So there's no uh, rocking back and forth as the gun fires. The MP40's blowback operation and the telescoping shroud for the recoil spring okay, were both patents of Hugo Schmeisser, who designed the original MP18 back in World War I. And he was uh, not happy when these, uh, when these features were copied in Irma's gun. What's interesting to note is what we now standardly call the, uh, the Bergman actually had more of Schmeiser's influence and design in the background of that gun than Schmeiser had in the actual design and development of the MP38 and the MP40 that now commonly carry his name. Uh, so it's a little bit of passing on. Uh, from one, one inventor to the other getting uh, uh, misaligned with, the, uh, with their inventions. Schmeisser was quite vexed to see his patents used in Irma's gun. Schmeisser's complaints were of no concern to the German army on the eve of World War II. The German army saw an effective gun and it was going to use it no matter what. 
One of the most ironic things about the MP40 is that Hugo Schmeiser had really nothing to do with it.